I laugh so much when I'm with my partner and I imagine when we get married, I'll laugh loads and nothing brings out the old like wattles, like me laughing, like ha <laughs> Wattle and gum, like I am pure gum when I'm laughing. And I mean, I try to restrict them, but you just can't do it. Like, <laughs> shoot an entire Welsh Wednesdays from the profile. Imagine your nose going and my wattle wobbling. <laughs> no. Welcome to Welsh Wednesdays with me, Kiri Pritchard McLean, and me, Katie Gill Williams. Me and Kiri are learning Welsh and we decided to get together once a week, have a scourse and chat about a different subject. And then at the end, we do a minute in Welsh. So this week's subject is um, sort of related to LGBTQ plus month. Um, and I said, I know just the person. Henry Cyril Paget, who is the fifth Marquis of Anglesey, um, also known as the Dancing Marquis, also known as Toppy. That's what he was called around the house. That was sort of his nickname. I'd never heard of him. I the first time I sort of knew vaguely, and then my partner and I, um, we uh, we're National Trust members because we're relentlessly rock and roll, <laughs> and we're in the gift shop, love a gift shop, and I saw this card and I picked it up. Um, and I had, there wasn't very much about him in the house. There was a lot about the other fantastic people who've been through there. Um, but there was this picture and I was like, who is that? Because this is one of the, like, look at him in his costume. I can't say he was gay because there's no written yeah. actual proof of it. Um, but we can say that I think he at least embodied, you know, a, a queerness in, in terms of, you know, definitely I feel like if he was alive now, he would at least be an ally do you know what I mean at the very least he would be out there fighting the good fight but I think he would more than that he would probably be on a float in Bangor Pride he was born June 16th 1875 and he died March 14th 1905 so he was only 29 years old actually when he passed away which is really sad but boy did he live lives while he was alive <laughs> <laughs> his mum was a, a woman called Blanche Boyd and she was married to the fourth Marquis now there's sort of rumours that he was illegitimate and that actually his biological father was an actor which would kind of make sense with what goes on to happen in France called Benoit Coquelin um, and uh, so it was sort of rumoured that she was having a dalliance with him anyway she passes away and it's actually Benoit his rumoured biological father's family that brings him up. Um, so he, he spends a couple of years living with them and then the seat of the family are like, no, no, he needs to come back here. He's a pageant. So they bring him back. And he was apparently quite a lonely child and spent a lot of time with his nanny and then was in this big country house um, and he had loads of animals. He absolutely loved animals. As an adult, he went on to have like 200 dogs. He had like a pack of dogs. He had a favourite as well. He was um he had a pack of poodles that he would dye pink, and he had a miniature one he used to carry around with him. So fab. Two hundred dogs is a bit more than a pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know the um it's just before Clamber Posh, isn't it? The the column, but I didn't know it was anything to do with Henry. Yeah, or yeah. Lee. That's his father or or grandfather. I'm sure I read Henry enrolled at some point. He Might did. need to. He didn't know he, he was on. He was one part of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, so he was. Oh. He, he did. He was. He did have military service. Ultimately, he wasn't very interested in it. He went to Eton as well. He's the only person I've read about who went to Eton that I like, other than <laughs> Ivan Graham. He grows up and he marries his cousin, um, which isn't a Welsh thing. It's a nobility <laughs> thing to sort of keep the money in the family and you know to keep to keep the bloodline nice and shallow. It's basically. Very, um, very royal family now, that sort of malarkey anyway. The marriage was annulled in uh, in 1900 um, on the grounds that it was never consummated. So this also adds to the idea that he was gay. And she said the closest they came to um, consummating, this is the thing I found, is one night he made her take up all her clothes and lie down naked so he could just lay out all his jewel collection on her. And she's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like the best one night stand I'd ever have. 
<laughs> yeah. Can you like imagine? To put a little ruby at the end. <laughs> Although knowing my one night stands with lads from around this area, if it was anything like that, it would just be a load of H Samuel leaving green marks on my skin. <laughs> bit of Elizabeth Duke round the old. <laughs> so he inherited this estate and the family business, basically, and the fam the title in 1898. Now, when he inherited it, it was the equivalent of 60 million pounds worth of property, uh, not money, and then property. Um, he owned all sorts of estates and houses, and they would generate about 12 million pounds a year in revenue from the estates and the farm. So he, be he became one of the richest men in the country. Fair fucks to him. He manages to spend it all in about six years. He loved a bit of um, the theatre, so he didn't he develop the space at um, Plas Newith into like a theatre space. So this is one of my favourite things. So there's a chapel at theatre uh, at Plas Newith. He turned it into a hundred and fifty capacity venue called the Gaiety Theatre. Have you ever heard such a great name for a theatre? And, and he used to put on plays there and pantos. And um, interestingly, he put on Oscar Wilde plays after Oscar Wilde, I think, had been incarcerated for being gay. So mm. it was quite a scandalous thing for him to be like, oh, yeah, still doing the plays. Like there would always be a 20 minute interval in them, apparently, where he would come out in like ribbons. And this is where he got his nickname, the Dancing Marquis. He'd do a butterfly dance, which mm. is sounds like it's sort of almost burlesque but very flowing very sort of sensual dance with all these ribbons and and also what he used to do at his shows he would he get these pictures of himself commissioned in these incredible costumes to give postcards of himself in in these costumes out to people in the audience so he'd be like babes you need something to remember this by <laughs> anyone could come from the local community so he's pretty well loved even though he's very very eccentric is how he was referred to but there's pictures of them on the grounds of class with just being gorgeous and young and creative and fabulous and it's i think and also i know that people are really kind of quite unkind about him spending all that money and it is an an appalling amount of money to race through but he money doesn't mean anything to some people it also shows how money doesn't necessarily bring happiness like it sounds like there was loneliness there and um yeah an oppression of the character he might have wanted to be like that was the only way he could maybe be who he wanted to be was um through kind of putting things back into the community and bringing the arts because Oh God, can you imagine how hard it must have been in that time to be so flamboyant and ostentatious and maybe suggestively? Mm. It must have been, I'm thinking rural, like rural Anglesey at that point, and that's not to kind of... Now, even yeah, now. It just takes so much strength and boldness to be that person in that landscape. Mm. So I just think he's frigging awesome. I love the way, and I try not to stereotype because there's, many different types of people of course within lgbtq plus community you know not everyone's flamboyant not everyone's loud um but i love the way that they celebrate themselves and they really because they have to they have to fight and they've had to be almost um abrasive because people would you know bring them down as they were growing up so many people have had to work so hard to get to that point of self-love and some people because of how society tells them that they they aren't to be loved and they're not deserving of it never get there he didn't know costume jewelry was fake so when he got things commissioned they would be in emeralds and sapphires and diamonds so he just didn't know that normally it's glass or whatever so there goes the money that's literally the money so he had he yeah. had a um a co costume commissioned for aladdin his most expensive one it was about 15 grand back then which is about a million pounds now and he left it backstage someone stole it he just got another one made they sort of described him as being like he looks like a man and he is a man but he has so many feminine traits and they say that is something the wording is something like and they're not just effeminate they're effeminate for a woman so like he was like extreme femme in in sort of the way i don't know whether it's talking about the way he spoke or you know like thought or whatever it was but they think that he's a kind of good example of very early gender fluidity he loved cars which is quite a masculine thing but he mm. had his 
made up to look like a train carriage, had four leather seats, like all facing each other in the back of it. And this is amazing. He had a compound put into the petrol. So when it drove by, it smelled of rose flavored with perfume. I fucking love him. <laughs> love him. Everything I learned about him, I love him. I, honestly, I know that's so like boring, chubby girl who wants a gay best mate, but I just think he represents just a level of freedom and inhibition and so authentic because also he could switch there's a really interesting interview at the time where he talks about um they're really surprised i think someone from the daily mail is like oh i thought you'd be wearing costumes and he said um oh no i've much uh, i've always preferred a scotch tweed I do know how i feel towards gender and its constraints i think we're so obsessed with it so unnecessarily that if just all of that was removed because sometimes i don't want to Sometimes I want to be, I want to look like I'm doing time in jail. You know, sometimes <laughs> I want to feel feminine. Sometimes I just, we're so multifaceted and I hate any kind of social constraints that's put on you because of what somebody else has decided. That's it as well. As soon as we stop seeing gender being linked to sex, it's, it's poison for everybody. It's the reason that men kill themselves when they're young. It's the reason that women are paid less. It's the, you know, the reason that women are, around the world are still sold into like child marriages it's it's killing and damaging everyone and as soon as we so we should look up to people who reject the gender binary as heroes they're they're the future and in fact they were the past he could write welsh which is incredible for someone of the nobility who is educated in eton to make the effort to be able to correspond with his tenants in Welsh. Well, he sounds like someone who wasn't born into the right family. Um, era. era. Yeah, or era. He believes in theatre being brought to people, to communities, but he's he has to live within, yeah, a society that doesn't understand him, within a family that, that doesn't know him. Yeah. And he goes to Paris and he dies, of t very sadly, of TB as so young not even 30 and there's obituaries that come out about him really scathing and yeah buried in sin the theater is turned back into a chapel so like the gaiety doesn't live on and m one of my dreams of moving back to when morn is i want to start a drama school and I want there to be a theater in it like a about 100 150 capacity because you can, can do small t tours there which is great because it's hard to tour in the countryside but the countryside really needs tours and I want to call it the Gaiety Theatre in memory of him because I just think that he's he's iconic. The biggest tragedies of all this is his family burn all his diaries, all his photographs, all his paperwork. Why would you burn it if there wasn't some sin or shame to hide by your by your mm. view? I think those diaries would have probably probably contributed towards a much fuller picture of him and I think a fuller picture of him being well they think he died a virgin but I do think that I, I've got no doubt he was traveling Europe having fabulous affairs I bloody hope so also think that if people want to take him queer people living in Wales want to take him as an icon have him babes we need more people yeah. like that because queer history has been erased at every point um, mm. in nature you know everywhere and Wales especially like we're not some backwater. We have people of ev of every expression in this country, and I think someone like Henry, if I was if I was a little gay boy living in Newburgh, you know, in the 1900s, and I saw this incredible looking creature in an emerald green jacket playing ping pong, dancing on stage, doing a butterfly dance, and then driving past, and all I could smell was roses, I would think oh, maybe, like, maybe there's people who are different and maybe it's okay. I've definitely been guilty of being a bit ignorant and being like, oh, there's probably not much LGBTQ community in North Wales. But there is, of course there is. We should be banging on about this guy. He's well. Right. He's amazing. Yeah, because, like, Dawn French was born on Anglesey and apparently just hated her time here. And everyone's like, Dawn French is from Anglesey. And it's like, great, she's amazing. But, like, we had this guy. Fundraiser, it's couldn't do it this year because of COVID, but we did it the year before. 
for a LGBT support group in Carnarvon because they don't have any money. And that's mm-hmm. pretty much one of the few places in North Wales where queer people have to go that's a safe space where they can spend time with other queer people. And that mm-hmm. stuff is so important. And when they want to go to Pride, the manager, of their own money, paid for a minibus to hire to go to Chester. Like... Our young queer people shouldn't have to do that. They should be able to be proud in their own city. And and you know who makes that happen is straight people going, as in like, it's we'll fix it. But it's our job to go, this isn't good enough. It shouldn't be their fight all the time. This is everyone's fight because we're all, fi- if you believe in equality, you fight for everyone. So I dream of a day where there's a, where there's a banger pride and all those brilliant, gorgeous, young Welsh queer people can be themselves and they can be surrounded by a community that loves them for who they are. Felly, dwi'n meddwl Pimed Marques, o Ynysmo, neu Anglesi, ydy gwych iawn, a bwysig iawn i yr hanes o pobl hoio. Is that how you pronounce it? Hoio? Dwi ddim, dwi ddim yn siôr, really. Dwi ddim yn gwybod. Um, a pobl queer sy'n byw, uh, byw, uh, yeah, sy'n byw yma, a pobl ifanc um, sy'n angen uh, icons, icon, you know, pobl iconic. Um, achos, dwi'n meddwl, mae'n bwysig i i co i cofio pobl wahanol achos <laughs> Henry Cyril Paget yn wahanol iawn um, and dwi me, dwi'n gwybod wahanol ydy euphemism ond um, mae'n ok achos dwi'n meddwl um, Henry Paget ydy um, wahanol pethau i wahanol pobl a gay icon, e v, a you know, um, nobleman, e a national trust, <laughs> and um, a priv peth, um, a d, uh, my, my own, existed, you know, th- that's what I'm trying to say. Is the the biggest thing is that he existed, that he was here. <laughs> Um, Unbadolly. Oh. Yeah. So, um, mine prive path a d my on my on unbadolly. There we go. Gaily I doubt. Bear a d prive as in privisco, main. Or... main yeah. So the main thing. Yeah. So that's how I've heard it used is prive as in to be the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mae'n gwych um, bod, bod o um, cael cer um, efo rhosir yn y, yn y petrol. O, oh, just uh, uh, syniad da. <laughs> I'm her goil to the amazing. Just th- imagine that, just being like, oh, he's, he's on his way. He's <laughs> still a mile off. Them and Paratoi didn't beat um, Scots Henema, so doing Tame Law, Dipping Back, or Aog, so my drug, Genny, Kitty, and doing Moe Happis, E. Dusky, and Dan Henry. I was Neshi, them and Gubot, I'm Danavo, Kin Heno, and mine a Shomedic, really. Achos Ruan, do we meddle roid on Dangos, a uh, Kumdathas? Mine yawn e Nade got Hanel. Mine yawn e Tamla, Tamla Vel. Oh, Tamla Vel. Oh, my landlord. I'm trying to say it's okay to feel like you're different. Yeah. Tinu Hanol, yeah, Tinu Hanol. Yeah, Tinu Hanol. Achos Paub Un Wahanol. Paub Un, oh Jesus Christ. Um, oh, this is great, this is great. I, yeah. 
how I, go on tip i do meddle um my um voice of gidangos e um Kaminez community and a, is, yeah and a kevin glad my meown e gnaid wahanol uh ne hoyo um achos mine perfaith a natir a a dwi eisiau dallu pobl wahanol a pobl hoyo yn Cymru achos mine bwysig a yn y dyfodol um, pobl wil um, byw fi 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 uh, byw um, authentically dwi'n cytuno ach mae'n cyffrois i i meddwl Cymru yn fordd no, mynd y fordd o, oh, lyd y fordd yeah, ok uh, and a, on a be, stage bead, he could not get a no there, a a yeah, um, LGBTQ communities. Well, you said you didn't know anything about him beforehand. What was one of the first, was it Pernoki or something? You said, what? Oh, Paratoy. Paratoy. Uh, so I didn't organize, like, I didn't prepare. prepare. Oh, prepare. Great. Paratoy yeah. care. Okay, that's a good one. You said you didn't know anything about him tonight, but you said um, that you, you liked him and that um, you think it's good that uh, there's to show that there's different in, in Wales that there's different people. Um, and then you got, and then what you've said now is it's exciting to think that Wales could le- lead the way in being a, a country or, or a place that's supportive. Of, of LGBTQ plus people and yeah I think I think that's it I hope he had happiness I think he did definitely in those outfits how can you not feel happy dressed like that <laughs> if not, Nessa, mm-hmm. I don't know what what have we got on next week um at a um I'm sadly, I'm sadly, I'm timetable, um, or spreadsheet that we have. I think you're doing Dewey Sant. All right, okay. Naho, there we go. A better paratoy. <laughs> paratoy, yeah, great word. <laughs>